Before we again, thanks to Laura for reading the psalm. I think we're so used to a sung psalm on the 10 o'clock occasion, so our error, not yours. Thank you for stepping up. But it's an unusual Sunday that January 1st is on a Sunday, the celebration of Holy Name. But actually, I decided to lean into this lectionary passage, the cycle of readings that we have on Sundays, from Numbers. Uh, We don't often have Sunday readings from Numbers. A reminder that if you flip to the very beginning of our Bible, you have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and the fourth book is Numbers. Part of the first five books that make up the law, the Torah of God given to the Jewish people. It's a lot of numbers, as you might imagine, but also quite a bit of kind of code given to the people on how to live. And this part comes from a section in which God is talking to the people who will be priests. Moses' brother Aaron and the line of Aaron. And this is the blessing God gives them to speak over the people. Now, if we're going to talk about blessings, you have to let go of how that word gets used in our culture so often. Sewn onto pillows or what have you. Blessing means something very different and something much more enriching in our Hebraic tradition. The actual word means to bring down divine abundance to increase. Blessing is a channel to the holy. It's a way to connect to the divine. In that sense, blessing is not a prayer. It's not ever a petition. It's a way of living in gratitude. Our Jewish brothers and sisters are invited into a series of blessings daily. A series of ways of remembering all the myriad ways God is with us in the things that are mundane. The gratitude for all the pieces of our lives that appear ordinary, but really have sacredness about them. And blessing is like, to speak it is to make it happen. It's not just like you say the words and it's well-wishing. To speak it is to actually have something happen. This is why when people bless people, usually fathers to firstborn sons in the Hebrew Bible, you can't redo it. You can't do it again. It's been done. It's been said. The words have evoked a kind of cloak of blessing over someone that can't be pulled back. If you know that Esau and Jacob's story, Jacob the younger steals it from his older brother, that's why that's so incredibly offensive. You've just stolen something very much palpable and real. God blesses also. At the beginning of creation, God blesses everything that is, invites it to increase. And so today, God is melding those two things together. The priests who are people are given God's name to put a blessing of God over the entire nation. And if you actually look at the Hebrew, If I remembered Hebrew from the years I spent learning it, I would be able to tell you better, but it's constructed in such a way that it expresses the actual way the blessing works. It starts with three syllables, the next line is five syllables, the next line is seven syllables. They build on one another. The blessing expands, just like the poetry. And so if you look at the first three syllables, that God would bless you and keep you. To be kept is about physical safety. It's the most basic thing. If you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs or you just consider how it works, you can't really do much if you don't have food or health or shelter or psychological safety. It's the very basis of existence. And that's the very basis of the first line of blessing, that God would keep you from harm. God would make your life safe. Then the next line is five syllables. It includes those three. But it's that God would make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Again, God is the actor. But God's face shining means the people will be able to see it and know God is present to them. Right? 
Maybe not literally God's shining face, but God will be present in the temple and people will know it. The Hebrew tradition has a great sort of, the Hebrew faith has a, the Jewish faith has a great tradition of God hiding. That God sometimes hides. The Psalms are constantly looking for where God is. The prophets. And if you read modern Jewish theology, the hidden God is all over that. And so this is a prayer that God would not be hidden, that God would be present and known to the people graciously, which means not dependent on their behavior, not depending on whether they're doing it all right, but that God is present through all of it to them, like a shining of a face graciously. But then the last line of the blessing is seven syllables, seven syllables. I wasn't even up late last night, people, and it's still, the words are not, not connecting. Uh, three, five, seven. That the Lord would lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And in this phrase, God is the most active. It's not a passive kind of presence. It's a lifting up and a looking at you. This is the divine gazing at people. The divine truly seeing and people truly seeing the divine. That's different than just God is present. This is an active engagement. And it's the active engagement of God truly seeing people and people truly seeing God that creates peace. The Hebrew word you might have heard before, shalom, preachers love to talk about this word because it, you know, it, it captures more than our simple idea of a peace. This is the deepest sense of well-being a person and creation can experience. That everything is whole. So much of life is so fractured. We're fractured within ourselves. Our relationships fracture. I don't have to tell you how society is fractured. And our relationship with creation is fractured. Shalom is the opposite of that. It's the wholeness. Whatever you think about those original creation stories, what God intended for creation and people was a rightness, a living together well, that we loved ourselves and we loved others and we loved God and we were all held in God's embrace in ways that were right, that were whole. Nothing was broken. That's the peace envisioned here. And it may not be the peace of exterior things, It's the peace of interior. It's God gazing at you and you gazing at God and knowing the wholeness that comes from that. That's the blessing prayed over the people by the priests, cloaked in God's name. And if you consider the second context of this blessing, it's perhaps richer. It's not just instructions giving to the people, it's instructions giving when they're about to enter the promised land. A quick historical trip. The people were enslaved in Egypt, Moses was called, he led them out, and then they went into the wilderness, and suffice it to say, bad decisions were made, and lots of people died. So, finally, after a series of unfortunate events brought about by human decision, I'm sure we don't know anything about bad human decision and can't relate to that. The people are about to enter the promised land. But it's not gonna be all sweetness and light. There are people living in the land. There will be arguments among them. It will be hard and Moses isn't going. A new guy is gonna take them there. And they don't know whether they trust the new guy or not. And so this blessing is meant to fall upon the people and remind them not when it's easy, but when it's hard that God is with them. That the divine name has been prayed over them. That God's grace shines on them and that God is gazing at them and wishes them peace. It's a prayer for a journey. And so I think as we begin 2023 and journey into this new year, these words of blessing are worthy of our consideration and they fall upon us. The thing about a blessing is, it doesn't expire. That's why you can't redo it. That's why you can't really retract it. Once a blessing is spoken, it's spoken. It comes into being. 
And the blessing has been spoken, and it has come into being. God is keeping us. God is graciously shining God's face upon us. And God is gazing at each and every one of us. And our journeys, wherever we are today, continue into the new year. And this new year will bring its own journey of joys and sorrows, of fracture and hopefully of wholeness. And as we enter this new season, this new year, may this blessing go with us. May we remember how God is present to us. Jesus Christ is the full countenance of God come among us, living as one of us. And the Spirit of God dwells in and around all of us, whether we know it or not, bringing us peace. That's the promise and the blessing of God. And so as we start this new year, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.